Peace, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Dynasty Amir, Search for Uhuru. And today's topic is titled, Dear Black People, Ghetto Gagging, might as well throw feminism in there as well. Fighting for illegals is not going to save you from being pushed to the desert. Now, I want to share this article. We're going to go over this article uh, that was popped up on my Facebook timeline. Somebody shared it with me. It's in regards to a black female who was on a Greyhound bus from Bakersfield, California, headed to Las Vegas, Nevada. And this article pretty much summed up the thought pattern, the dusty thinking, dusty logic of a lot of black people in L.A. or in California today on the West Coast. And why it's a wrap for black people in Cali. And I know a lot of you guys are like, Dinus, why do you continue to share this stuff? I'm just trying to put it out there that. The black people who are serious in California need to separate themselves from people like this immediately. If you plan on being productive, if you plan on staying in California and making it, people like this that we're going to read about need to be avoided at all costs. Because once again, they are more concerned about non-black issues, feminism, LGBTQ rights, illegal aliens, than they are black issues. So once again, people like this, black people in LA, California who are serious, people that think this way need to be avoided at all costs. But let me, let me read this article, and this is on BET.com. So while traveling from Bakersfield, California to Las Vegas, a California woman was able to stop Border Patrol agents from demanding passengers on a Greyhound bus show their documentation at an agricultural checkpoint. Tiana Smalls, the owner of a handmade beauty product company, was on a bus that stopped at the checkpoint near the Nevada state line. Okay. Let me break down what's going on in California right now. As you know, black people, you know, places like South Central, Compton, Crenshaw area, even Inglewood, at one time were predominantly black. Slowly but surely, black people are going extinct in those areas and instead are being pushed to areas like San Bernardino, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona, and Riverside and Palmdale. The areas that I brought up, especially specifically South Central and Compton are now predominantly Hispanic. So black people are being gentrified out of LA and are going to places being sent to places, being forced to places like Vegas and Phoenix, Arizona, which is the desert. Guys, it's so damn hot in those areas. I have no idea with somebody why someone would want to move to Phoenix or Vegas, but I digress. But at the same time, these same black people who are having to move to these areas these were the same black people 10 years ago, 15 years ago, them in, in New York, where if you brought up Atlanta, they would tell you it's too slow. Meanwhile, these two same black people, as they tell you that Atlanta's too slow, they live in small studio apartments or don't own anything. But anyways, let me finish this article. Uh, we are being boarded by Border Patrol. Please be prepared to show your documentation upon request. Smalls wrote on a Facebook post that detailed the June 6th 
incident. Instead of simply complying with the agent Smalls, who knew her rights, said it in the Fourth Amendment, informed other passengers that this was illegal. This is a violation of your Fourth Amendment, right, fourth amendment rights. You don't have to show them shit. This is illegal, she said, according to her post. Smalls went on to explain to the other passengers that Customs and Border Patrol officers didn't have the authority to enforce certain activities because the bus was not within 100 miles of an external U.S. border. They have no authority to ask you for anything, she said, she told passengers. For the passengers who weren't fluent in English, fluent in English, Smalls used Google Translate to help her alert them for of their rights. Smalls said the woman seated next to her who didn't speak English looked terrified. I wonder why she looked terrified. The Smalls loudly accused the agents of harassment and racial profiling. She said the agents had no legal right or jurisdiction here. She wrote in the Facebook post. In the end, her decision to stand up to authority worked and the border patrol agents allegedly retreated and told the bus driver to go ahead. These border patrol officers act like they do because they expect people to be afraid of them and just comply, Smalls wrote on Facebook. Smalls urged others to speak up, to use your voice, take a risk, she wrote, because if you let them intimidate the poor Spanish-speaking woman next to you, who do you think they're coming for next? Smalls said she did what I thought was right. I didn't do what I did or share it for accolades or thanks. All I wanted to do was let people know that they can and should speak up even if that means risking being arrested. Now, if only black people in LA went this hard for each other, black people in LA would not be in the situation they're in right now. If only they went this hard for each other. But instead, they'll go hard for everything else while they're still being pushed to Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona, San Bernardino, the desert. If only the likes of Maxine Waters, you know, I need my time, whatever the, the silly meme is, went this hard for black issues in LA, black people wouldn't be in the situation they're in right now in LA. But once again, we'll go hard for everybody else and get patted on the head, you know, good job. Now get your shit from LA and go to Vegas. That's the congratulations you get. That's what we're dealing with. I mean, think about it. How militant she was. How defiant. This was her um, uh, Rosa Parks moment. And then she had the audacity to say, if they're doing this to Spanish speaking people, what do you think they're going to do to us? They're already been they, they're already doing it to us. And they've been doing it to us. And it's going to be they're going to continue to do it to us. So what are you talking about? But do the Spanish speaking people get this militant for us? Is it do the Spanish speaking people reciprocate? And the answer is no. And this is the point, the point I'm making, and this is why I'm going to get to the ghetto wagon part. This is, this is the reason why this black and brown coalition is BS and why it's not reciprocated. It's more black than brown. As you can see, prime example right here, this black lady risked it all, risked it. Put everything on the line for non-English, Spanish-speaking people. But damn it, it won't be reciprocated. Anti-gravity 74. This is, I'm, I'm, this is how I feel about the whole kids being separated from their uh, parents, the illegal immigration. If they didn't illegally immigrate, it wouldn't be an issue. I mean, there it is. Again, if they weren't illegally immigrating, it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, that's why there's no person of color, uh, minority coalition, black and brown coalition, because black people are doing way more for the brown 
than the brown is doing for the black. And this right here is a prime example. So as black people in LA are being gentrified out of the city, ghetto gagging, feminism, fighting for LGBTQ matters, and fighting for illegals is not gonna save you. Because trust me, they're not going to go out of their way to fight for you. I don't know, I don't know what it's gonna take for you to understand that. And again, when it comes to the, I guess the kids being separated from the parents, if you don't illegally immigrate, then you don't have that issue. And then wherever they're coming from, what about the governments? Why aren't they, or why aren't they getting involved? Okay. You fighting for illegal aliens, okay, is not going to spark a nerve in Maxine Waters to start fighting for black people. You fighting for, if you're black and you're in California, you fighting for illegal aliens, you know, I'm a ghetto gag, I'm a fight for feminism, I'm a fight for LGBTQ matters, it's not going to cause your Democratic black leaders to fight for you. They're just going to continue to play you. That's what's going on. OK, you're not Maxine Waters is going to continue to play. you. OK, your black politicians are going to continue to play you. all these other uh, groups that we fight for. OK, that we risk it all for. OK. Are not going to help you out. You're going to be continue. You're going to be you're going to continue to be forced to the desert. Las Vegas, Phoenix area, San Bernardino. No matter what. So all this energy you're putting into for illegal aliens, you might as well just put it into yourself. Into black people. OK. Seriously. I mean, Richard, that's just what it is. I don't know why people can't get that. Don't understand that. Do not understand, especially black people on the West Coast. I just don't understand why they don't get that. I knew what time it was probably back in 2011. I just knew something wasn't right. I knew something wasn't right. Doug, this is this is the issue I have with. Uh, This is the um, issue I have with a lot of black immigrants. What black immigrants should have been doing. See, me, when I go to Africa and I go to a specific African country, I learn everything about that culture. I reach out to the local people. I partner with the people over there. And I partner with the, of course, African groups over here. The issue with a lot of these black African or well, African Haitian immigrants, okay, whatever, we'll say uh, non African American immigrants that come over here. When they come over here, okay, a lot of them isolate themselves from the black community, black American community, okay, and they partner with white supremacy. But then when it's, and, but then when they're about to get deported, all of a sudden they want help from the black community. So at that point, you're on your own. Because you're, okay, be, you call yourself immigrants. How do you visit Africa and then call us immigrants? When you come over here, you're an immigrant. What are you talking about? I mean, don't take it personal. My African friends that have immigrated to America call themselves immigrants. Right. You can't be a situational ally. I'm just being honest. Like if you're African, OK, and you believe everything you see about us on TV, every negative stereotype. And you leverage that to not connect to us. 
But then when you're about to get kicked out of the country, all of a sudden you want to reach out to us. Now nah, you're on your own. That goes for everybody. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't make sense. Like when I go to Africa, I don't isolate myself from the African community. Why would I do that? I learn everything I can. I reach out. You know, I connect with them. I build with them. But at the same time, when a lot of African immigrants, you know, freaking, um, I guess you want to say Haitian, when they come over here, they're not reaching out to the black community. And it's the black communities primarily there is the reason why you can come over here in the first place. The sacrifices the black American community made made it possible for you to come over here and enjoy certain benefits. A lot of them are, are in getting to these Ivy League schools. Let's talk about it. Because of affirmative action, the sacrifices of black Americans. That's just real. Now, we could be delusional about it, but that's just the truth. So now that you're getting kicked out of the country, come help us, black American. Well, where were you when things were good? Are supposedly all good. Seriously. You know, that's just the point I'm making. You're on your own. I'm just telling the truth. You believe, you use every, you, you, you come here a lot of you, you get around the worst of black society, the worst of black society, ratchet and hood of black society, and then you wanna use that to stereotype, stereotype all black people. But then when it's time for you to get up out of here, all of a sudden you wanna reach out. Like right now you have a situation with, the, with Liberians in Minnesota, which I'm gonna do another video on here in a second. Okay, so you have a lot of indigenous Liberians in Minnesota who are about to be deported out of the country. Okay, who came over because of the Civil War. And this Civil War started because of the contempt the indigenous population have for the Americos, the black Americans that founded Liberia. And now they want to leverage the reason why they shouldn't be kicked out of the country is because Liberia was founded by black Americans. But when black Americans were ruling Liberia, we were fucking the worst people on the planet. We were the colonializers. You know, when 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 Liberians were when black when black Americans were ruling Liberia, we were the uh, you know, it's an example of the press being the oppressor. But all of a sudden now you come over here because of Samuel Doe, uh, uh, a babbling idiot with a second grade, not even a kindergarten education, cause a, um, leads a coup, executes the Americos. Okay, they he, he didn't even give them the opportunity to be sent on exile. He thought it was cute, ex executed them on the beach, on national TV, killed him. Okay, he could have had, at least had the dignity to allow the Americo leaders to go, leave on exile. Okay, look, we're taking over, you guys go to Ghana. So he executes them like animals. Samuel Noah, babbling, dumb idiot, starts a civil war and look at Liberia now. Look at Liberia when Americos were in when were in leadership and look at it now. So now those indigenous Liberians were able to immigrate to America because of the sacrifices that black Americans made, because of the likes of Booker T. Washington. Uh, when we're dealing with the uh, uh, the African Exclusionary Act, Booker T. Washington fought against it. When they didn't want African immigrants to come to America, it was Booker T. Washington, a black American who fought. 
and made it so so they could come and immigrate. It was Booker T. Washington that kept, that kept Liberia from being um, uh, colonialized by the British. It was Booker T. Washington. So now that you, you guys back dough, you guys have so much contempt and just envy of the Americos. Okay. Has so much contempt and envy towards the Americos that after your plan didn't work out, when you were cheering dough, you had to come over here because of the Civil War. Now you now you're over here. Your time is up. Now you want to leverage the sacrifices of black Americans so you don't have to go back. Nah, I can't back you on that. You're on your own. You're on your own. Now to the ghetto gagging part. Hold up, Sism. Look up ghetto gagging. Okay, make sure no one's around. So Tiffany Haddish. Okay, your 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 guys' favorite black actress. Pretty much says she wants to ghetto gag with Leonardo DiCaprio. So this is what we're seeing, and, and, and this is the mentality we're dealing with, and we're dealing with a lot of black people in LA. Instead of dealing with the issues that are affecting black people, she wants to ghetto gag Leonardo DiCaprio. And that's not gonna help your career. And that's not gonna help black people in LA. You're still gonna be pushed to the desert. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Make sure you guys, when you guys look up ghetto gagging, make sure that uh, you know no one's around you look it up. So you have a lot of black people, men and women, who think that ghetto gagging is gonna save them. And it's not the case, it's not going to. It's just, it's not the case. I mean, you're you're pretty much just a science experiment to non-blacks when you ghetto gag. That's all it is. You are a freaky experiment. That's it. So ghetto gagging, fighting for illegals, LGBTQ, pretty much any agenda before the black agenda is not going to save you from being pushed to the desert. Guys, make sure you subscribe, like the channel, uh, like the video. Make sure you share. Uh, make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, Africa Personified on those same platforms. Also, go to Africa Personified on Africa. Search for Hoover.com, DinahSamir.com, and go to Amazon.com. Search your name, Dinah Samir. Please buy a book. Until next time, family peace.